Oh. There's no power. This isn't good. Remember how I said I was brought out to do this now, not necessarily do this right? This is a great example of it. So I just e-taped my finger closed. Well, it works. Hey bud, you want some Wi-Fi? What's up guys, Jack here with MTS, and it is a bright and early 8.15 in the morning. Just got a call from one of my clients, the client with the uh, barn network out in Virginia, and they have really terrible internet out there. We've been looking to try and get them something better, so what we wanna do is tap into the main house network and then run a cable over to the barn, so we would trench out fiber through the woods. But they said they need it by Thursday, and it's, it, it's Tuesday, so. Guess who's getting on a plane in an hour and a half and going out to Virginia? This guy, I need to pack. So generally, I don't like to check my bags. However, with United, uh, I kind of have to, but I have my AirTag mounted in a rack mount thing here. I'm just gonna use zip ties through the rack mount holes, so that should be easy enough. Just checked in my bag, not exactly how I planned on spending today's morning. Landed, now we're at Micro Center picking up stuff for this job. It was, this is fun. This is not what I thought I'd be doing with my day. All right, so we have some gear for round two and a half. Uh, we have giga beams here, 60 gigahertz bridges. This is gonna get the internet from this house to the barn. We have a set of nano beams to get it from the barn to somewhere else. Although if these guys don't work because they can't penetrate through the tree line, we might have to step down to the nano beam so we can do a uh, five gigahertz. These guys can also do five gigahertz, but I'd rather use the nano beams for that and then use these 60 gigahertz ones where we might have line of sight in the future. Now onto the main reason why I'm out here. Now this house has a faster internet connection than the barn does through a forest. And by forest, I mean, it's like maybe 20 trees dense of a tree line in between the properties. This house has a much faster internet connection than the barn does. Now the barn has a 10 by two connection and this house has an 80 by 80. So we wanted to go with the same ISP over at the barn that's delivering internet to the house. However, the tower that this house gets its internet from is currently maxed out. So they would have to put up a hundred foot mast to hold a dish to basically pull in signal from a different transmitting tower. Now that would be a big lightning risk. It's also ugly and cost a crap ton of money to get the company to come out here and do that. So the idea is, hey, let's just beam the internet in the meantime from the house to the barn. So that's why I'm here. I mean, I literally got a call and they were like, hey, when are we gonna be getting the faster internet? And I'm like, yep, we have a roadmap. We're working on timing on everything. And they're like, great, what does that roadmap look like? And I'm like, well, we're looking at trenching in November and then running the cables in December. And they're like, we need this done by Thursday. Not sure how much of this you'll be able to see in the nighttime here, but so there's now a staircase that goes up to where the nano beam is, and there's a door and everything that's been put up. So this is all nice now. I gotta go up here and figure out what's up with the controller being offline. Okay, so I'm just up inside the barn here on this side. You can see the nano beam outside going out to the Zebo thing over there. It's not daylight. But so this controller is offline right now for some reason. Um, not sure what happened to it, but it went offline like two weeks ago and hasn't come back on its own yet, so and there's no lights out here. Oh, there's no power. Well, this isn't good. No wonder there hasn't been internet. The power's freaking down. Okay, well. I need to diagnose that. So I didn't film any of me trying to fix the power issues just because, well, I was working with live AC, so I didn't want any distractions of, you know, me trying to hold a camera or anything like that. So there ended up being three power issues. One was a trip to GFCI, reset the GFCI and nothing happened. 
So I then went down to the breaker panel and looked at breaker 17, which is what all of that stuff was connected to. And what was connected to breaker 17? Nothing, the line had come loose. So I turned off the backup generator, turned off the breaker panel, reconnected it, fired everything back up and the breaker tripped. I'm like, what? So I had to go troubleshoot that. There ended up being a cut in the line. Luckily it was up in the exposed open hayloft. So I didn't have to go tearing down walls or hunting down cables for too long for me to pretty easily find it. So I found a couple extra electrical boxes and some spare Romex. So I was able to use that to cut out the bad section of wire and put in a new one with boxes on either end. So it's done properly up to code and I got to play electrician for a day. <laughs> that solves that question. <laughs> All right, cool. So we've got our, oh, I need to blow this whole thing out with an air compressor or something. Yeah. All right, so with that figured out, I'm gonna go back over to the gazebo and see if that network comes online too. And I'm gonna do some speed tests to see if, well, the power being out was the, the real issue and not the fact that they only have a 10 by two internet connection over here. Yep, so the issue ended up literally just being the power. I was able to hold a great FaceTime call with my dad, so. Yeah, now I just gotta check out the rest of what they managed to do here. All right, so day two, we ended last night pretty good. We got three access points in place. Now I wanna take a look at that point to point link and see if we can try and get that working. And two, I'm gonna try and see if I can deploy another access point at the barn. But first we have a lot of work to clean up over there. So this doesn't look very good. This is all iPhone footage. Um, I'm gonna do a quality upgrade. Um, all right, cool. So. Now let's go over to the barn and start redoing a lot of that mess. <laughs> All right, so the first thing we have to do is put a termination on this jack right there and then we need to fix the nano hd installation that's done here so yeah i'm gonna rip all this out and redo it all right wall plate installed all right now it's time to come into the office here and install this in wall access point properly so this mess is not gonna be here anymore. So gotta rip all this stuff out. It's like they made an attempt to install it, but did not do it anywhere close to properly. What the heck? That didn't wanna come out. Oh my gosh, look at all that extra mud and garbage here. This is not gonna go on very clean. Oh, and that, this was put in upside down. What the, who installed this? I mean, I ran the wiring, but I didn't run it to these boxes. Oh gosh, this is. Can't make it any worse. <laughs> There we go. And it's gonna get covered up by an access point, so I'm not too concerned about it. The reason I went with the in walls here when I originally put these in was for the pass-through ports on the bottom. Because this is an office here, they can plug in computers. They already have a little security system that was plugged into it, so the built-in switch is very helpful. Plus it has a PoE pass-through port, so that could be used for something like an IP phone or um, a security camera or whatever they could really want to use in here. All right, and that's nicely on the wall now. So we can plug their security system right back into it. And look at that. It's no longer a weird mess of crap dangling out of the wall. Now just look at how much better this looks. That's so much nicer. I do have to turn off all the LEDs on these guys. So I'll change that in the controller. So this is the desk. So I'm thinking they can run a cable over here from the desk. Um, they can wire in their printer directly, but they have a little security system there. 
And that's what's plugged in here. So yeah, we got Wi-Fi and a switch for them. So we're done on this side. Now we get to go over to this side and get access so we can run a new line for another access point. Okay, so we need another access point at the barn. So I'm gonna take the LR access point out of one of the bedrooms, swap it out with a Nano HD, and then use the LR access point over at the barn. So now I just gotta go swap that out. So this is the LR access point out of one of the bedrooms. I'm taking this out and I'm taking it over to the barn. I just have it plugged in down here so that way I can reset it. And then I'm gonna be replacing it with a Nano HD. I would replace it with an in-wall, but the ports are right behind a big piece of furniture and they're on the trim down on the floor. So I don't want the furniture to get in the way of the access point. And I generally don't like using the in-wall access points down really low on the ground. So it would be on the, the trim board down there, but in the bedroom. Also the LR was using a blue cable to connect into the wall. I'm replacing that with a white cable just the way it looks nicer in the bedroom. Okay, so swap that out. So now I have the LR access point ready for deployment at the barn. Now I just gotta go run that wire. The plan changed. Instead of doing two apartments in here, they're only doing one and it's gonna be on this side. So over here, I'm gonna grab some of the network lines and use them for the access point. So there was a cable running down this side of the ceiling. I pulled it back up, ran it over here, drops down. I'm gonna go over top of the doorway. And then I have this other cable here that I cut off uh, just from the box. And then I ran it through the hole and it's gonna go down by the breaker panel because like right underneath here is where they need another access point. So I gotta go pull this cable through, then I'm gonna splice these two cables together. I don't have a ladder, so I have to do this. Oh! I reopened the cut on my finger, untwisting these uh, ethernet cables. So I just e-taped my finger closed. Well, it works. Okay, so this is where that cable comes out. I hate running networking stuff by power, but I have no choice in this case. So I'm gonna put the access point probably right up there. So I got the new old access point put in, old one from the house, new here though. Sadly, the cable has to run along with power, but it's only for like four feet, so it's not the end of the world. Now I just have to go fix up another one of the in-wall HDs in the tack room. So right here is where the other in-wall HD needs to be deployed properly. And the in-wall HD in the tack room is installed. It's a little bit crooked, but not the end of the world. Not super happy with this, but it was a pain in the butt to mount it there. And I had to jigsaw out a bigger hole, so not gonna take that down and redo it. Okay, so I just have a little crap little setup here and got a cable running over here. Got the gigabeams paired to each other. So I'm just gonna stick this one in the windowsill of the house here, aimed over at the barn through the tree line. This is just a quick and dirty test setup to see if this is even gonna work. Okay, so I'm about to head over to the barn now. Uh, remember, the magical number for us to hit is 80 by 80. If we hit 80 by 80, well, we're saturating the internet connection and we'll be fine. Okay, so I was just working on a quick and dirty little setup for the Giga Beams and they couldn't even get a connection to the house at all. So it's a bit of a distance away. It was a long shot, it was wishful thinking, but it's not gonna work. So seeing as we were at least able to get the internet working here again, that should be fine. And we can try something else in the future. Okay, so the entire barn is on a generator backup. That's why I didn't put in a UPS to begin with when I did that network installation. But since the network's been done, they've added other things to that circuit, such as some lights and a couple plugs. So if they ever need to turn the power off in order to you know, maintain those plugs, lights, anything like that, I don't want the network to go down with it. So we're gonna go put in a UPS. Specifically this APC 600 watt thousand volt amp unit. So this should be able to keep that network running for a long time. Okay, so I got the redundant power in place. So now this thing should have three layers of power. One is the mains power, two is the generator, and three is the battery backup. Tested it on battery, it works on battery. Battery's all connected and working fine. But this router is getting incredibly hot. This little USG switch is running hot. This whole thing is running really hot. So I need to try and find some sort of fan that I can put on this rack, even if it's just zip tying it to the outside. Anything until I can get uh, some louvers in here would be incredibly beneficial. Remember how I said I was brought out to do this now, not necessarily do this right? This is a great example of it. So we have a fan that's bungeed down and to the inside of the bottom of the rack. 
And then we have a piece of drywall here flanking off or flagging off this fan so that way it's only blowing through the rack. And then another bungee that's holding it over here on this side. We have some airflow. The reason I had to do this instead of actually put in louvers is because I don't have time to have them shipped here and install them into the rack. I'm leaving tomorrow morning, so this will have to do for now. I'm coming back out later this year, so we'll be able to do this right, so it's not the end of the world. But yeah, this is a very ghetto solution. Editing Jack here, so I did go ahead and put that fan on a timer. It's only active from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., which is really just when the heat's you know hitting that barn. So. It really did help bring the temperatures down. The switch was running at 85 C, and so with the fan in place, it brought it down to 63 C. So a 22 degree improvement, I would say, is well worth you know, the jankness of strapping a fan to the side of a rack. Now, I am going to be replacing that come February when I go back out there. I'm getting some industrial fans to go in the side of the rack to blow air over, and I'm gonna have those on a thermal couple so that way they're only triggered when, you know, the temperature gets really hot. So, seeing as this is also gonna be pulled as soon as winter comes within the next month or two here, not the end of the world. This place is like a ghost town. Okay, so I may or may not have forgotten to film an outro to this video while I was out in Virginia. Things kind of get a little bit complicated when you're trying to super last minute do two network install videos doing two network installs. So everything's been working fine for them for the past two weeks. They're able to do all their video calls. That's the primary thing they do. They do horse training and like dressage riding lessons over video calls. So that's really the big thing that they need. So everything's been working for them. The fan has been working pretty good to keep everything cool. You can see in the controller software when the fan turns off because the switch and the router both go up a few degrees at night. But so far, everything's been working out great for them. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like. If you really liked it and want to see more of me in your subscription feed, you can go ahead and hit subscribe. I'll have links or I'll try to have links to all the Ubiquity and every other piece of gear that I used in this video down in the description, but you know, stock is, well, not exactly great right now. But while you're down there, go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know what you think about this job overall and especially the, the fan bungee to the rack. Have you guys done anything that jank? I wanna hear your most jank network story down in the comments. But anyway guys, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.